and welcome to Finextra. I'm Hannah Wallace and we're here today in Toronto for Cybos 2017. Joining me is Nadim Saeed from Finextra and we're talking about the move towards open banking. Nadim, thank you for speaking with me today. It's a pleasure. Can you tell me, what are the main challenges that banks face today? You know, the, the entire banking industry is going through a massive shift, right? In the last eight or ten years, especially after the financial crisis, things have radically changed for the industry. And, and there are challenges that are coming from multiple avenues or multiple dimensions. You have regulation that's coming in fast and furious. This is incredibly invasive regulation that's forcing banks to rethink everything they do uh, around, you know, whether it's capital markets, retail banking, etc. The second area is you, you have new incumbents who are completely challenging status quo, right? Whether it's a challenger bank or whether it's a non-bank lender, they're creating a new business model that's challenging the conventional approach of, of banks. And then you have new technology, you know, whether it's uh, digital technologies, mobile banking is, is on the rise, whether it's blockchain, whether it's AI, artificial intelligence, all of those things are forcing banks to rethink how they run their infrastructure today. And within all of this, banks are, are, are facing compressing IT budgets. So you have lots of challenges and not enough money to spend on them. And it's clear banks are looking for faster ROI. How do you think they can break the rip and replace cycle? As I said, you know, the banks are facing a massive shift in technology, right? And they, when you look at how they run their infrastructure today, it's largely homegrown systems, systems that, systems that were written a long time ago. Now, they know they need to change and move to a new way of doing things, and there are two ways of doing it. One is you can either rip and replace everything. The challenge with that is, A, it costs too much money, and there's tremendous risk in, in, the, in the project, right? So you have numerous stories where banks have invested hundreds of millions of dollars on large projects that have consumed all the, all the capital, all the, all the cost, but hasn't delivered the ROI. So we believe the right way to approach this is to not rip and replace, but take an evolutionary approach to the next generation architecture. This is about incremental steps that take you from point A to point B, but in every step of the way, it gives you ROI. So you've got to think of the world almost like Lego blocks. You know, either I can get a big block or I can buy, get a bunch of small pieces and build the Lego up. Each, each piece can give me incremental value. So that's the way you've got to do it. There's no doubt that the move towards open APIs is gaining momentum. What are the main drivers and how can banks benefit? And it ties back to the, the question you just asked me, right? So, you know, as I said, you can't embrace the change by going through this massive transformation. You have to do it incrementally. And when you do it incrementally, you have to take your existing pieces and essentially make it meld with the new infrastructure. And that's where the open APIs come in, right? So this enables you to take advantage of the new functionality. So layering on a new digital channel capability or a new blockchain capability like the Lendercom that we just announced last week. All of those are designed to work with existing systems and you need open APIs to enable that. So this cycle of moving away from rip and replace gets you know, enabled through this open architecture, open API enablement. And we firmly believe in that. That's the journey we've been on for the last four years with our Fusion Fabric initiative. And we are excited that the, the market is finally catching on to it. Nadine, this is very insightful. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you. And thank you for watching.